Perfect. You are now tuned into the Monday Mix Show with your co-host, Molly Maul. That's not true. Bolo's and Jay. Unbox that. Shut their mouth, please. And Buckeye City Soul. Powered by the usual suspects. It's the Monday Mix Show. Let's go. Yo, it's Monday. Welcome to the Monday Mix Show. I am your co-host, Buckeye City Soul, a.k.a. Kev. And today we got a great show for you. We are without Mr. Marcus. Um, hopefully uh, he feels better. Um, he's a little under the weather. But I will go ahead and pass it to Mo. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Mo. As Kev alluded to, we are down uh, Marcus this evening. So, uh, yeah, get better. Hope your AARP is up and uh, kick it over to a uh, mall. Uh, what's going on, usual suspects? Welcome to another episode of the Monday Midsole. Molly Maul here, leader of the Light Skin Legion. Miss out and cop another one. <laughs> and we are joined a <laughs> uh, by a very special guest, TJ. What's going on? What is going on, everybody? Thank you for having me again on the show. Absolutely. So, um, TJ, why don't you kind of just share your Instagram, let the people know where they can find you, your social media, I should say. Uh, yes, everybody. So uh, I have dropped some comments in the chat. So you can find me here on YouTube, Talks with TJ. And then you can also find me on Instagram, talks.with.tj. And I am pretty active on Instagram and like to engage a lot on there, as well as in the comment section of my video. So if you ever comment, I promise I, I won't leave you hanging. I will get back to you, heart it, reply to you, all that. <laughs> Links in the Twitter? description. Links are in the description, people. <laughs> we got Twitter. I do have Twitter. I, I don't talk sneakers as much on Twitter. It's more so me ranting and going on about fitness or whatever happens to be trending. But you can follow me on Twitter at Fit Jeter Girl. Awesome. So that's what I my that's it. what my Instagram used to be. So it's now talks about with that TJ. <laughs> gotcha. Hey, I, I love a good rant. <sighs> <laughs> it gets bad and then I'll share them on Instagram and people are like you need to go sit down somebody needs to take your phone away <laughs> Good enough, have a man. drink have a drink <laughs> yeah so um, again welcome thank you for coming on and uh, let's get the interview started we are gonna get our questions popping just like we always do tell us what got you into sneakers Oh man, I had to have started when I was like really around 11, 12 in terms of collecting, but I've never been girly girl. Like even when I was really little, my mom would buy me the little t-shirts with the little bows that were right here for little girls. And I would come home every day with a hole in my shirt. <laughs> my mom was convinced that I was being attacked by another kid or she's like, what is going on? She went to my teacher. She's like, why does my child keep coming home with the bow missing? And then finally she just asked me, she's like, do you rip the bows off? And I'm like, yeah, I don't like them. And she's like, so what would you like? I'm like, just the regular t-shirts that don't have bows on them. And so she finally realized, just go to the boys section and buy her clothes. She'll stop destroying them. And so that was that's always been my style. I cried when my mom put me in a dress at age six for a birthday party. And she finally let me put on new sneakers and a jumpsuit that somebody bought me. And I was a happy person. So I, I always gravitated towards sneakers. And then once I really got into like organized basketball, a uh, well, higher level of play, when I was 11 and 12, um, I idolized uh, Crystal Young. She played for Benedictine High School. She was ranked fifth in the state of Michigan at the time. Just a great role model, but her uncles would deck her out with every new retro that came out. And I'd be like, Mom, can I go hang out with Crystal so I could go over there <laughs> and take all of her shoes and wear them? And so once I saw her collection, that's when it popped off and I started taking really good care of all of my shoes and stacking them up. And it's never stopped, unfortunately. <laughs> Hey, fortunately or unfortunately, I guess it's a double. Un story. Unfortunately for my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> That's facts. Yeah. We have a support group um, every Wednesday and Sunday. So if you ever need help, just, you know, just reach out. We got you. Is it called Nike Anonymous? Do I come uh, in with like a, do I come in with a hooded robe and my little candle and say, hi, this is TJ. I'm a Nike holic. <laughs> this is my fourth, this is my fourth pair this month. One day at a time. That's it. That's it. I would. I would need a one day chip. I feel like all the time. If it's not shoes, it's clothes. No, it's always. It's always something. It's always something. That's for yeah. sure. I know. It's so bad. Um. So, what would you say is the pair that got you started? Oh, 
the one. <laughs> the one that got me started. I'm actually going to say, um, Crystal, she ended up, she had a pair of 11s, and I don't remember if they were like an old style, I don't know if they were a Concord or not, but it was just a patent leather that attracted me. And I'm like, this year, no, my mom definitely wasn't buying that for me. <laughs> she wasn't buying that, but um, I think it had to be like a Nike shock. I think my mom did decide to like buy me. She was like, hey, you can get these Nike shocks. I was like, fine, I'm not arguing with you. <laughs> I'm not arguing with you. I can't, I, you, you are not paying a Jordan 11 price. That's fine. And then it moved on. Like I've had different brands all throughout. Just people don't understand that. Um, like I've had tons of Iversons and things like that. People think yes. I'm like, I'm, people think I'm anti every other brand, but Nike because I wear it and I have it on my, you know, on necklaces and things like that. No, it's tons of it. But what caught my eye, she had a Jordan 11 and I just, I knew I had to keep chasing it. There you go. So right now, what would you say is your favorite pair? <sighs> I would actually say my Jordan 1 Bretos. Okay. Like the leather on it, the quality, the fact that it's really that mix of old school and new school because it does give us that traditional bread vibe, but they just added those sail panels on it, brought it a little bit more up to date in the 21st century. And I didn't, I, I, it was a last minute buy to finally get that once I got it in hand. I thought it was like the best decision of 2018. <laughs> there you go. Mine are still unlaced. Uh, the fact that, you know, yep, I have to lace my J's. I tend to just grab another shoe. Uh, I appreciate it. I love them all, but I just like, yeah, no, I don't got time for that. One take a minute. They do. I, I remember when I wanted to lace swap my uh, shattered backboard lows. I was like, ooh, I don't know if I should put these on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, usually I'm in a rush to grab something real quick. It's like, uh, uh, boom. Which is why, like, my playoff 11s got so much burn because I could wear them in any in any condition. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to those. We'll get to those. <laughs> So uh, that's, you know, kind of the shoe, the genesis and everything. Why don't you just kind of just talk us through your story, um, you know, how you got to kind of where you are now with, with YouTube and everything that, you know, your content and that what you produce. I originally did. So I think I actually started YouTube back in 2016. I don't think a lot of people know that. And it was not Talks with TJ. It was actually Fat to Fit Finance. And the uh, slogan behind the channel was kind of to help people stop being fat with debt and get fit with their, you know, their bank account being in the black versus in the red. And it was just all finance focused. And my financial rants are just about young people being really frustrated when it comes to money management because nobody teaches us this stuff we go through school and they teach you math that you don't need like pythagorean theorem and once you finally get into the real world and you have a big girl boy or job and you find out that it is just expensive to exist and breathe as an adult <laughs> and then you feel really lost so i would go on and on about it on twitter and finally i was like let me just start a youtube channel and then you realize that uh it's not that easy <laughs> to get attention to get people to watch but I did have one video that really popped off and it was uh, parent plus loans are dumb. And I don't know how, I totally forgot about that video and it's almost at 10K now. So people are catching on to the fact that I would never advise a parent to take out student loans. And I was an admission counselor and a financial aid counselor at uh, the private institution I graduated from. So I did have quite a bit of background knowledge and firsthand experience. And finally, I got off of YouTube. I just let the channel sit there. I wrote a budgeting ebook and I actually give it out for free every single day to anyone that wants it. All they have to do is hit up my email, say, hey, I want your budgeting ebook and I send it out to them. And that was just kind of my way of helping young people know in a very condensed way of how I budget because people would always say, I don't understand how you can take care of X, Y, and Z and not stress about it, but you buy sneakers and you go shopping all the time. And I'm like, I do. My mailman knows me by name like all the time. And I, you know, I just said, hey, like I budget for it, I plan for it. So I don't have to feel guilty for the fact that I just bought something for myself. I'm not just working to pay bills. I would like to enjoy little parts of life. And that's where the, the book, um, the name came from, how to build a set budget. So save extra debt payments and treat yourself. So I am very for people. If I don't know if Starbucks is your thing or sneakers your thing or going to concerts, doesn't matter. We all have something that we love to do. I just want people to be able to do it and still take care of business. And I kept ranting about it on Twitter. And one of my friends, Lexi, was like, you really need to go ahead and just put your channel back up. But I didn't want to do it in the way that I did it before. And I thought, well, 
sneakers is kind of that bridge for me and everyone that I can probably talk to that really is into that. And that's actually how it popped off. So I decided to name it Talks with TJ because it allows me to talk about whatever, whether it's sports, whether it's money management, whether it's sneakers, whether it's clothes. Now, because I work at Kids Foot Locker, I do like release recaps so people can have kind of that behind the scenes look of what do we see from a grade school perspective and preschool and infant because those are the most ignored genres in all of this. And that's kind of where it's taken me. Uh, being able to have people say, I love your channel, but I've backed off buying shoes and now I'm able to save five, seven hundred a month or I was able to pay off this or people watching my Foot Locker videos on kind of how to conduct yourself and they say, hey, I got an interview or I got hired based on your video. So that's definitely what motivates me to keep going, even though those days where I felt drained because I didn't plan to do daily content and now I somehow got <laughs> roped <laughs> into doing daily content where one of my subs who's in the chat right now will literally be like, hey, it's five o'clock, where's the video? Where is the video? Uh, so I'm held accountable now at this point, but I, I do love it. It's a great escape and a getaway sometimes where get in front of the camera, trying to just talk my ish, do my thing and edit and get it out. And then I love interacting with people. So that's why I say, I try to get back to everybody in the comments. That's awesome. All right, so um, you know, peeking through your page and everything, I saw something about StockX affiliate. You have a YouTube video that's dedicated to that too. So why don't you go into a little bit of detail for those folks who may not know exactly, you know what the deal is with that. Sure, uh, I will say this wholeheartedly. When they they first reached out to me, I thought it was fake. I thought it was fugazi. I'm searching around, like I was I was searching all online trying to find you know StockX affiliate. Was there anyone else that maybe I follow or associate with? on either Instagram or, you know, Twitter or YouTube, because we know there are those bigger names that are actually, you know, associated with StockX, whether they do events, they go to StockX Day. I mean, I've seen Mike the Compass go there and he's done vlogs and behind the scenes. And so that was really my like full introduction to StockX is when he did his vlog and I got to really see that, even though it is like downtown, not too far from where my mom lives in Detroit or in, in the Detroit area. And so they hit me up and they say, hey, we love your content. We love what you bring to your platform. And we want to partner with you to, you know, pretty much if people are already going to shop at StockX, because a lot of us go there. That's, I mean, now we don't have to stress about missing a shoe. We know that there is a market we can very easily go to and we can watch it. We can see how high the price goes, how low the price goes, and even a resale, because I don't have an issue with somebody chooses to resell a shoe. We go there and it it's pretty much a way for people to support me. So they you know let me know hey we would love to partner with you and the way it works if there is a shoe or not even a sh you know they do watches shoes hype beast items supreme bait doesn't matter but most of you go there for shoes so if there is a sneaker that you want to go on StockX and buy whether it's via bidding or entering a buy now price all you have to do is let me know what shoe it is i will send you my affiliate link and you click on it and you act on it the exact same way you would if you just went into the StockX app but by you clicking on that link, it's a way for you to support me. So I'm not someone that has merch right now. I don't really do the live chats where you guys can do super chat and donate, but this is a great way for you to really just give me a little bit of your time instead of money. Cause you'll just take the few seconds out of your day to say, hey, TJ, I want this shoe. I'll send you the link and boom. And I'm able to look and see, hey, these are the people and these are the shoes they have. So the fangirl moment I had is when Tasha Cloud from the Washington Mystics, who just won the WNBA championship, she actually hit me up via DM and she was like, hey, you're associated with StockX. And after I got over, you know, my hyperventilating, I'm like, yes, I am. And she's like, uh, she wanted to get the ISPA React that came out in black and gray because she missed out on it because she's probably on the road traveling for games. And she went ahead and bought that through me and tagged me in it when she did. So I thought that was amazing because not being associated with them, I probably would have never gotten the chance to connect with her. And, you know, now I just go through and repost all of her stuff and she's living the life, having won a championship. And I love all the support that you guys give me via StockX. So a lot of times I do try to put the most updated links that I have in the description box of my video. So like right now, you guys will get an early look of the Air Jordan 4 What The for grade school. So on Thursday, you'll be able to see those links in there if you happen to want to go via the StockX route to buy, just in case you miss out on release day, as well as like the new Bread 11s for grade school and men. So I always have my links available, but if there's a shoe that you want, just hit me up, it takes two seconds. I get it out to you and that's a good way for you to support me and help me build my brand and my partnership with them. What's up? Awesome. Um, yeah, just one thing I'll, I guess I'll interject. Um, 
I still stress no matter what. <laughs> you still stress? <laughs> I, uh, still I think stress. people people assume that I don't stress because I work at a kid's foot locker and they're not aware when there are super limited releases, there's only a certain a percentage of stock based on the number we get in that we right. are allowed to set aside for ourselves. So it's not like we get to hoard pairs. It doesn't work that way. I've taken some L's. I've had to have managers fight for me to be able to get me a shoe. Um, so shout out to my boy, Mark, because you were amazing for that for my Crimson Tint one. But it's not always a cakewalk for us to be able to get a shoe unless it really is like a really massive GR. So I still have to stress sometimes too, guys. Yeah. I worked at Foot Locker way back when. I know the deal. Yeah. There's, there's priorities. <laughs> so. Yeah. All good. Um, so... I got a few more here, but I'm going to just open it up to Mo, um, AKA me, 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 and see if he has any questions that he would like to, to share with the group. He actually, you actually covered, uh, I only had two or three. You covered, uh, the stock X. I was going to, I know TJ, you and I, we've talked about that. I never really uh -huh. asked how that came about. I just kind of pushed some people your way. Uh, but Molly asked, so he answered <laughs> that question. Right. And then, um, Shit, I'm losing my train of thought. What was the other? Thing? And in the book, I was gonna. You sent. We talked. You sent me the book. I read some of the book. I stopped reading the book because I just got kind of overwhelmed. And he touched upon that, and you did too. <laughs> so I'm just like, well, damn. You know, I didn't think that we. No, we, no, we you're did. good. I'll, I'll I, I do this, bro. I do this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maul is on it. Um, I'll, I'll just, I'll just lead and help, and I'll say this: that when it comes to like stock eggs, you have no idea, honestly, who may be watching your content, consuming your content. So I think it is always important to be mindful of that, maybe in the way you present, you carry, you market yourself, because the individual that has the power to press that button to really give you support, whether it's a sponsorship, whether it's funding, whether it's anything, just to stand behind you, uh, kind of like Sneakerheads Clothing Line does with me. So I'm rocking one of their brand new shirts right now. So it is the baby girl <coughs> Aaliyah shirt. Burn and they shirt. have <laughs> wow, that's really how you feel. I'm that's just messing. Is Jason? Jason ain't even in there. You, yeah, I can say it. Burn the shirt, Jason. That's I said it. Jason, I said it. don't listen to him, big bro. Uh, whether it's this shirt or any other other ones, you know that I, that's kind of how I got connected with him. Is just being able to, you know, he was consuming my content. Him and I just kind of talked for a little bit. I ended up winning the giveaway, and just the conversations never stopped. And I absolutely love working with them for what they stand for, what they promote. So, Sneakerheads Clothing Line, Code Talks with TJ does save you guys 15% if you spend $30 or more. So, pretty much, if you buy a shirt or some premium laces, you get money off, but you have no idea who could be watching. So, I didn't know that I would have this connection I do now with Jason for Sneakerheads Clothing Line. I also didn't know that somebody in, I don't know, marketing or whatever it may be, and StockX was watching me, and I'm grateful for it. <laughs> As mom would say, please don't do me wrong. Please don't embarrass me or make me ashamed when you're out in public. Uh, <laughs> mm. oh, I need awesome. to listen to that advice. <laughs> yeah, you know, definitely. <laughs> I actually had a giveaway with PocX, like, what was that, two years ago now? Which was super, super dope. So, you know, like you said, you just never know who's watching. Oh, yeah, who might, yeah. you know, tap your shoulder, reach out, and want to partner on something. So, uh, that being said, you are touching so many different avenues as far as, like, your content. You kept it broad. You said specifically change the name, talks with TJ. Where do you want to see things, you know, kind of progress to in the next, you know, call it year or two years, et cetera? Huh, I, I would love to be able to travel probably to events. The thing now is I work so much and I have other priorities that may rank above me traveling. So I guess that is the beauty of technology now is you can still have a voice and talk to a lot of people. It doesn't have to be physically face to face with someone. But I think in growing my channel, my goal is just the numbers game. So the more people that are actually consuming the content, the more young adults are actually exposed to the money management talks that I have. So I know those are not the most watched on my channel, but as I continue to grow, those will start to gain traction. And I would probably love to eventually maybe one day do lives where I hold budgeting session so if i have young sneakerheads all come into an actual live and we just start talking about money we start about talk about pickups and talk about maybe how to plan for them and once they are looking ahead to being on their own you know how do you budget your money how do we prepare to really live a life on our own if you get a raise don't just go out and buy a brand new car because you've not wiped away all of the extra income you're gonna get for the month you know once you look at that stock x calendar or the little release calendar let's say on sneakers news please don't just try to go get every single one probably won't wear half of them uh they'll probably just sit there and collect dust some that you think you're gonna flip the market kind of reneges on that and yeah. uh, you're 
you're sitting on a dud. Oh, There's nothing you can do, hoping you can get your retail price back. So I would love to be able to do that. I mean, eventually I want to get out face to face, hold one on one budget counseling sessions with young adults, maybe do seminars at high schools or even at colleges. I mean, I've already had to talk to college sports teams, you know, recruiting classes of 100 or so when I worked at my alma mater. So I would love to be able to do that. And hopefully being on YouTube just kind of gives me that platform for it. Yeah. Well, if you decide to go live, um, I will volunteer my services at least for a few. That is my background finance. So uh, yes, I, I, I got it. I'm connecting. I'm connecting now. I'm connecting yeah. now. <laughs> You're like yes. <laughs> for real, so, these are listening. These are connections I need. <laughs> so, is, so is that more the direction that you're trying to go with with the channel? Is the channel as far as uh, with, want, with the that... channel? I I love the fact that I can give. As I've had a lot of women reach out to me. Uh, one woman, uh, she reached out via Instagram in my DMs, and she said, "Hey, you know, I think she was out in like California area with her husband." And she said, you know, my husband and I love watching you. And it's so nice just to have another woman to hear oh. your perspective on shoes. Not, you know, she's like, it's not that I don't like or enjoy the male content creators that I can watch in this lane, but to have another woman, I can get her perspective and her view and how does the shoe really fit? And the fact that grade school, you know, releases are a little bit different in structure and style and features than what men's are. And so I like that I am able to cater to kind of a, uh, I guess underappreciated uh, genre and sneakers. Right. And so I would love to continue to do that. I don't plan on stopping buying, you know, whatsoever. So I'm just That's gonna keep growing. Crazy. It's 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 not a lot. A lot of times that women can have somebody that they can relate to. In this, it's usually us being among our friends and I'm known as, hey, she's the friend with the cool sneakers. So I think we're all sometimes kind of isolated in our little friend groups that you're the nut that keeps buying sneakers all the time. Mm -hmm. So now we all have, we yep. all have a community. <laughs> At least for the ladies, yeah. so they can tune in and they know. I'm honest with people. There are times I, if the stock X is not the best price for me, if I miss out on the shoe, I'll tell you, hey, I went on eBay. I went on Goat. Like I went on Goat to get my Fear Guy Air Raids. I'm gonna keep it transparent and honest with you in terms of go for the best deal. Listen, keep the most money in your pocket. Facts. <laughs> Seriously. Well, I mean, I like that. As far as you know, I think like you said, it's unfortunate that it it is less content-wise watched. Although it's more important, yeah, it you is. Know, because it's... I think a lot of uh, people don't realize you. A lot of us, you know, you got some people I'm sure who are burning through check to check buying shoes. You got a lot of us who are budgeting to get shoes. You got a lot of us who have second jobs, me, and use that to just blow it mm -hmm. on shoes. You know, so I think that aspect is very important, especially for like you said, growing up. Because you know, and I was talking to my daughters about this because they'll be going to college next year. They don't teach you in high school or things like that how to prepare. You know, how to budget. You know, it's right. all about, like you said, I shouldn't say useless, but I mean, a lot of this math, I, I'm an not engineer, practical. I'm 41 years old, all that's exactly, I've never used calculus yeah, a day in not. my life, in my job. So it's, you teach, you should, you should focus more on teaching people about saving and finances. And if you want to be a mathematician or something, okay, then you can stress the pre-calculus and all that. But I think, you know, what you're doing, you know, definitely is, is very, very valuable. So, you know, keep, yeah, keep, I, I, keep pushing that content. I, Thank you. I majored in finance and we only had one course, like literally my whole degree was finance. And we had one course that was called personal finance. It was the only course you really touched on how to manage money. Mm -hmm. Outside wow. of that, it's more so looking at the business aspect macro, of, macro. yeah, it's, it's you looking at a, at a macro level, me looking, you know, you had to go through cost yes. accounting and how do you look at a balance sheet? How do you look, you know, profit and loss? That's what they cared about. They didn't care about the fact that I'm going to have real life rent or mortgage or mm -hmm. car payment these student loans, student loans. these student loans mm -hmm. y'all have stuck me with <laughs> uh, that i chose nope. to sign my life away for the first time and that's not what they touch on we did have one assignment where based on what you thought your role would be when you graduated you had to look at what the um like average income uh, was for that role and then you had to plan out kind of what your life was going to be and then people found out that their bougie way of living that their parents funded for them they couldn't afford that once they graduated <laughs> Reality. It's a hard knock life. It is hard. hard. <laughs> I believe my mom. <laughs> but, um, that's it for my questions, Kev. I, I'll kick it to you because uh, just see if you had anything that you wanted to add. No, you guys covered it pretty much. Um, uh, you got anything else, Mo? Uh, no, I'm good. TJ, no, I'll, I'll hit her on the side if I need her. <laughs> she always does. Or be like, listen, get your lazy butt to the gym. <laughs> uh, Shit. All right. Oh, oh, oh yeah. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
yeah, I need anyway, to follow that advice. You know, the real real quick, I'm is the the link that you were saying that uh, people can use is it's not it's they have to reach out to you for you to provide it. It's not something that no, just, it's not. Yeah, because that's yeah, it has to be specific, yeah, to, that to, be shoe, specific to that shoe because it takes okay, you okay, to the landing okay. page, the link that they provide for me. Now, hopefully, in the future, it could be a little bit easier because I remember somebody did touch on the fact that it would be much easier if they could just input a code and it got me credit. For it, but I think the way they do it, it's based on that shoe because they can track if you are a right. current StockX user, right. a brand new StockX user. And I think that that's kind of the right. difference of why they do the individual links. I would think that they'd be able to right. attach that that code to whatever shoe it was. Too, I so. think that well, I think that's the issue. Yeah, it's not going to take you to that landing page. And then if somebody does a bid versus, um, right, you know, now, a buy it now. If you do a bid, that bid can expire in 30 days. Right, which right, right. I, w I wish my bid would have expired in October. Would have I forgot about? <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, um, accidental purchase. Uh, I did. Well, it was no October up until I got the email from StockX. Ooh. You won, and I thought I was you know, literally. I'm not joking. Like I thought I was hacked. I was like, how can I be hacked? And I'm a freaking affiliate. No, it was just me, and I forgot to take my bid out. So, I, mm. what, what was it? It's the vault van, yeah. the marshmallow deconstructed shoe. So it's got all the foam and everything. Uh, I blame the soulmates because Marcus has it. He posted about it and then I instantly ended up bidding on it. And I lowballed. I thought the person wasn't going to take it. And, they... and you tell right, us about the budget. <laughs> mm. pay that I lowballed. I lowballed. <laughs> I lowballed. I lowballed $80. Mm. The person took it. It was $150 on For eBay and I wasn't paying that price. Frivolous <laughs> purchase. Mm. All right. Anyways, All right. um, let's keep it rolling, bro. What's in the box? Right. Let's go <laughs> know what's in the box. I'll show you the box. Who's in the box? Because I envy your normal life. Put the gun down, David. It seems that envy is my son. Oh, uh, what's in the box? <laughs> Welcome to What's in the Box. This is when we talk about our last pickups uh, for the week, as well as go through the uh, the releases for this upcoming week. Who's going first? I'll go first. Oh, actually, not ladies first. TJ. Oh, I get to go, go first. I get to go yeah. first. <laughs> ladies first. Uh, here, so, well, if you guys don't know, so they did bring this awesome old style <laughs> school box back. <laughs> I did next oh, day shipping. <laughs> I, yeah. yeah, I did next day shipping. Yeah, no shame. So hey. I do have the brand new 2019 Red 11s that came out. Hopefully you guys can check out that full unboxing review on foot video or outfit as well in the video. So that is up on my channel now. Nice. I will be unboxing mine tomorrow, but not on live or anything. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get mine till Wednesday, you know, when that, uh, that regular shipping. Oh wait, hold I got on. regular ship mines tomorrow, I think. Wait, you hit on these two more? Yes, I did, sir. Everybody hit. <laughs> well, F all y'all, shit, I ain't hit. Thought you was gonna play with my frog. <laughs> I, I, I'm thinking that I was no. Oh, I get dumping in my new <laughs> I'm thinking Kev the only one who hit shoot. I ain't okay. Well, nah, excuse I me. Excuse me. Yeah. All right, go yeah, ahead, TJ. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's all. Listen, that's all. I have a. Uh, I'm. I'm. Con I, I conducted a trade, so. That shoe isn't here yet, but you'll see a full video on that. Mm. Astro Lab. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I'll, okay. I'll see it in the story then. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm about to say who won. <laughs> yeah. Who won? I feel know? like I won only because the shoe I'm giving. Well, the shoe I'm giving up is iconic, but it is not the most comfortable like that year that it released that style it's not the most comfortable so why don't, why don't you tell us what you gave up but you don't have to tell us what you're bringing in i feel like i'm gonna get flamed if i tell you what i gave up Ooh. no because we don't know what's coming in i mean it could be perfect. I'm a, well i'm gonna see it regardless we're gonna see it go ahead tj what you got what'd you give up? i traded Hold away up. the 2013 bread one okay that's fine yeah you'll be all right I had yeah, though. it's not it's it's not it's not the 2016 is the one I really want to go after. I settled for the 2013 as a late pickup recently, like in the last few years, and it's not comfortable. Like I had a coworker's fiance, she had the same style. She didn't wear them a whole lot because they're just not comfortable. I go to my 13s over my 16s because I like the the color, the, the red, the dark. Oh, really? It's more vibrant in the 13. All right, we, I we need, also I need soft, you have I need immense materials. You run a grade school. True. 
for yeah no nah, it was just it's stiff and it is it's not comfortable like other ones Pause. i can be in all day and <laughs> I'm oh, a girl. Yeah. I, was <laughs> I I can be in my other ones all day, and these and these ones, you just gotta sit down and look cute. You can't be doing no moving. <laughs> IDA, are you trying to figure out what I traded for? As long as you don't talk to Deshaun. <laughs> Let's say we're gonna see it. You know, we gonna see it. You guys are gonna see it because you're behind the scenes. Yeah, we're gonna see it. It's all good. Okay. Okay. Molly, you uh, Oh, okay. Oh, I can go. No, 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 don't matter. Hey, look. Kev, yeah, no, Kev, go ahead, Kev. What you got? Because I know he's going to pull out something. Well, I, I got these, man. I ain't said shit, <laughs> I'm a, I'm ain't shit a, all week. You already know what I've been hunting, so. I got you know, um, the What the Fours. I uh, picked these up. Just a, just a, a hair early. Uh, I love these. Fours are my favorites. <laughs> uh, these are all four of the original Fours. You know, some people, you know, and even I thought, I was like, well, you know, where's the bread at? But the bread is in the other shoe. Uh, yeah. On the, on the uh, tongue, um, they had the uh, the black flight, but uh, yeah, love these. Wish they would have had a little bit more bread, you know, about it. But got those low carb, low carb, but the fourth. <laughs> <laughs> they actually did justice for grade school. So pick pick these joints up. What was that noise? <laughs> no. It sounded like somebody's stomach. Um, yeah. <laughs> I picked up the uh, red carpet uh, LeBron 17, all red shoe. Mm. Um, mm. You know, it's a, it's a weakness. You know, I had to mm. had to do that. <laughs> um, Ended up budgeting books in a row to save cash from a red shoe. <laughs> oh yeah, I know, right? <laughs> then uh, I got. Oh this. Lord, you... team cop. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna. Um... Is that a size 16? Oh. That's a big. That's a big looking shoe. This is, this is RNS, real nigga size. <laughs> so yeah, it's a size twelve. Uh, but you know, it's still like real, like you know, it's the factory lace. So you know, I gotta, I gotta. I think I'm gonna put some infrared laces in there. I might have to hit Jason up and see, uh, see if we can get some some infrared laces for these. I mean, I, I like the yellow too, but I think I that the infrared um, maybe goes a little bit better. You know, the yellow might not pull yeah, me in, in the direction that I want to go in. Um, <laughs> the I direction got, of red. <laughs> I, got a, I got a couple other things. I, I'm pulling this one out. Come on, let's go. Well, Don't be a, where the mugs at. <laughs> yeah, fuck, fuck the mugs. Nah, I, hey, I, got my, I got my Uggs on right now. Um, <laughs> they my house shoes, man. They my house shoes. Oh, and then shout out to uh, City Gear. Um, they sent me um, some Vapor Max. Um, I don't know. I forget which ones these are, but uh, I just like the the colors. I mean, I like the, the Seattle uh, Seahawks colorway, uh, although I don't like the team. Okay. But uh, you know, um, H Russ. You know, went with uh, went with that MVP. Okay. I got, I got a couple other things too, but we're gonna leave it at that. What's the problem? They ain't all down here. I'll save them for next week. But oh, uh, okay, okay. But yeah, uh, you know that's okay. that's what I picked up. Ma? I'm just just setting, bro. You already know what I want to hunt on, hunt for. Yeah, two hundred. Uh, Kyrie. <laughs> I was gonna yeah, say yeah. all two, all two hundred. Gotta catch them all. That's it, man. That's what it's all about. You got the Miami pair right here. Uh, Kyrie six. L.A. Mm. Got the heel of the world. Which I got a story for these, but I'll save that. Uh, H Town, Candy okay. Paint. Those are fire. And okay. So those are all the U.S. pairs, and finally got one of my international pairs in uh, Tokyo. Oh Lord. Yes. They, so, he, yeah. I'm sorry, but he's he shut it down in terms of wearable collections this year. That that men, women, kids, everybody's wanting to go after, especially in store. We sell his oh, shoes out. Wait, wait till the IDs. Really? Yeah, I gotta get that. I got, I'm gonna ID pair. Like I think those pairs are cool, but like I could also see myself liking them now and not wearing them down the road. Like the Kyrie twos that came out. Like I really liked the shoe when it came out, but mm -hmm. I never go to pick them out to wear them. You know what I'm saying? So I think that in order for me to wear them. It's got to be. It's got to be an ID, just like this LeBron's. If it wasn't an all red one, I won't. I probably won't wear any other LeBron. Although I like the shoe, um, and I, it'll probably be a dope uh, hoop shoe. 
I just don't, you know, after their after the the newness is worn off, do I really go back sick. to wear them? No. So I gotta <laughs> try to be smarter with uh, my spending after this week. <clears throat> Man, yeah, so um, didn't we hear something? As far as my count, <laughs> uh, can't be stunting. Uh, as as far as my count right now, um, in terms of what I need to complete the set, I need two more. Mm. Oh, so you got more, ten, 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 you All got the ten? other ones, I have ten. Ten secured. I have what? Six, six physically here. Four, four in transit. And what's two the need two? To be cop. What's the two you need? I think I. What's the two? Uh, the Taiwan pair, and the Beijing pair. I figured that one. Yeah, so it's the China yeah, pairs that, that were the hardest. Okay. Um, okay. Like all the U.S. pairs on a resale from a resale standpoint, like there's stu- uh, there's sub two hundred. Mm-hmm. All the other ones are, you know, up th- up there. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're, they're up there. <laughs> so, uh, I'm fighting people who are like trying to bid me up, probably the seller and all that stuff. But uh, I've been able to. You think they sold out over there? Oh, they definitely sold out. Oh, Kyrie's okay. popularity in those countries are crazy. Yeah, oh, okay. they 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 love the the United States. They love our players far more than we show love them. Yeah. Mm, well, I okay. mean, they go out there and actually do shit. Yeah. <laughs> well, in, in the U.S., true. they want load management. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> out there, they're you know, fucking Ali Kuei, yeah, running running the streets <laughs> with the kids and shit. They got they got <clears> vacation <throat> time in the first thirty days of work. Where do they do that? Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> chilling. So. They get a way different experience than we do here in the states, as it, as it pertains to the players. But okay. here it is. Um, yeah, that's my pickup. I'm just keeping Kyrie this week. All right, I'm gonna make it quick. I had one of those pickups that I'm kicking myself for. Pick- Why are you kicking yourself? Well, unfortunately, you talk to me. go ahead, go ahead. Because <laughs> I'm sitting here, they, they dropped a seven. I'm rushing the. I knew I needed to size up a half and I'm just rushing to try and get it and I didn't size up the half. So they came in, I said, you know what? I might be able to make this work. <laughs> Slipped them on with no socks. And I was like, oh shit, these ain't gonna work. <laughs> take take so, that out. We got them. Oh, that's next. You, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try and do that later. But. Yeah, if you did that, you'll be fine. Cause what it is, uh, oh, I mean, lengthwise, I feel like the half size definitely helps, but that zoom pocket yeah. in the front mm. takes up mm. a lot of space. So like I had the Houston pair on Saturday and I was just like literally trying to stretch it out. Like just flexing my feet, the whole nine yards, just trying to stretch it out as much as possible. Because what it's doing, it's, it's compressing on the toe box. Because mm. of that and that's pocket. even half, that's even half up. That's with the half size. size yeah. But I know my size in Kyrie's, I always have size. So um, okay. that zoom pocket takes up a lot of space. And this material right here isn't as giving as say like the fours and uh, three mm. to five, the fives, you know, gave a little bit more. Like this is very stiff material. Okay. And that three sixty grip that they use right there too takes up space. So we gonna we we might we're gonna give it a go. We might snatch the insole out, and then uh, these came in as well. On your and the, the crazy thing is, <laughs> no, but, but you know, it's so it's one of those where you know what. Uh, Skin, and I'm Skinner, you know, Skinner always shoots some shit over too. So they missed on sneakers and then probably like what an hour later, Skinner's like, yeah, here, there you go. They they lie. They're up on um, St. Alfred or website. I was like, ah, fuck it. I'll try it. They look weird. But when I put them on, I was like, they're comfortable. Yeah, they're comfortable. It's, it's, they're comfortable and they don't look bad. It's funny when you hold like when the pictures, I was like, man, you throw them on. I'm like, shit, I can, I can mess with everybody. This. Everybody so, hit on I'm sneakers like, there for those. And they were like, this is not the one I want. This is not, this is not the release I wanted. Y'all really just hit <laughs> to have good karma for later on down the line. <laughs> hey, I'll take them. They, they, they work for me. So yeah, I've been like, kind of chilling. So. Those little spike things. Those Hello, spikes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I'm gonna break those out tomorrow. So there you go. And that's all I got. That's all I got. All right. So we're all uh so Ma. Yeah there. Well let's go ahead and take take it away. Take it away. Re- Alright, so let's see what's coming out this week. <clears throat> Let me get my sound effects together. Oh boy. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, Lord. 
Anybody in the market for Joyride? Because damn, there's a couple pair coming out. It's a lot coming. We just had to. Um, I just had to unbox at least three new colorways last mm. night at work. Has, mm. Have you tried these on? So there is the one slip-on style, the one that's on the very far uh, right for kids. It almost feels like the beads and the, the cushion is pushing your foot up too much. It almost feels like it's going to mm. come out of the shoe. On the traditional, the first style that came out, uh, it's extremely comfortable. Like people were comparing it to Boost. So I know the beads just, you know, it just, I think it's a preference. Like the, if you go with the OG style, they're super comfortable. If you go with some of the newer slip-on models, it's like a sock dart with a super thick midsole. All right. Well, there you go. You got four I pairs like left. Look up it. Over. I'm I'm good. <laughs> I don't like that. Uh, we got Adidas Ultra Boost SNL X Wing Starfighter uh, and a Star Wars times uh, Adidas Alpha Edge Forty Death Star. Uh, you know they're gonna be four hundred dollars. <laughs> I don't That's... understand. Adidas is making money, um, but I don't understand how. I don't either me. because oh, wow. I get the new tech, but there is a price point that new tech can mm. still stay at. Right. Yeah, I just that, don't. That, yeah, I don't see it from like I don't know from from a culture standpoint. You know, like how they were popping in twenty fifteen. They're definitely not now, and for mm. whatever reason, like sales are going up. So I don't. It, it's there's a lot that goes into a lot of variables. I mean, a lot of their revenue too comes from soccer international, but from a U.S. market standpoint, uh, Adidas, man, ugh. it ain't working. See you on the yeah. sale rack. <laughs> For real? No, nah, but it's like not even shit. <laughs> um, so we got Plunger's Times Converse Pro Leather oh, on the twenty first. Right. You gonna cop? Hell no. He ain't, he ain't got <laughs> look, at that, look at that look at that midsole. It looks like a platform. It does look like platform a platform. Midsole. Like if you yeah. you know you look you looking to grow a few, you know. <laughs> but you're yeah, not I'm as short. You don't want your girl to show up in heels and you too short, but nah. those ain't it. <laughs> Oscar, Oscar, Oscar you getting me? Dudes can't rock that. Hey, you that was, it's gonna be some dudes rocking it. You already know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Dudes can't rock Uggs either, right? Good luck. <laughs> Tom Brady. Tom, hey, I did a video. Tom Brady does. I don't care if he's sponsored or not. That man still stepped out of him. So yep. that's his. That's wrong. his choice. I stepped around Nike. the house in mine. Hey, these joints comfortable, Tom. man. These joints. He he had paparazzi taking pictures, so he stepped out the house in his. Ooh, I'm in the man. house. I'm in the house. <laughs> I'm in the house. So we got like an Air Max ninety. You good? Yeah. Oh, All right, man. we got a uh, MX90 right up Marcus's alley. Mm. Is it like a camo? Yeah. You yeah. Got the snakes. yeah, it's like a camo with like a uh, like croc skin on a the croc? side. It looked like like a swamp. Air Gator Ma bait. Call it. Yeah, I think like I, I think they're trying swamp. to I think they're trying to prep us for all of the Air Max 90s that are going to come out next year since it's like what is it 30th year anniversary for I'm them. good. They're gonna prep us. I'm just saying mm. that's why they're starting now. They're mm. gonna prep us for get flooded with nineties next year. Mm. Warhawk, please. <laughs> 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 we got Our the Jake ball. to Snakes and Soul Land Times uh Nike Blazer Mid. I'm good. <laughs> and it's not that I don't it's not that I don't like Blazer Mids, but just not that. Hey, Mo's gonna have him. they're gonna he's gonna have a big ass bag and carry him over his shoulder like <laughs> 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 That's gonna oh, be that's right. gonna be his new shoulder bag. A bunch, a bunch oh. of shoes in, in the bag. He's gonna, he's gonna throw it in the middle of the street. I mean, I was about <laughs> to say I left it until TJ went in on him. Uh, uh, let me hey, let me man. shut up. Look like uh, Lamar Latrell on Revenge of the Nerds Part Two. <laughs> when he had them, uh, when he if, had you, them. if you would give me, yeah, no, nah, if you're gonna give me an option between like Stranger Things blazers and these, I'll just say Stranger Things. <laughs> That's right. Oh, yeah, Stranger, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So on the 23rd Saturday, we got the Peace Minus One times like Air Force One Low. Hated it. Nice. Okay. I'm good. Um, yeah. <laughs> just just the classic works fine. Adidas EC yeah. 500 Stone. Uh, exactly. I, uh, Adidas I NMDV V2. <laughs> mm. and, uh, NMDs even still... The oh, NMD, I'm not gonna say anything's mm. dead. That was their bread and butter, and it still sells well for kids. But mm. I don't, mm. I don't get the appeal of the 500. Like, no, I don't know. I, don't, I, don't I want to know why the hell there's cat food on my my damn computer screen. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
<laughs> Google yeah, tracking. Sometimes you gotta, you gotta feed fancy Google fees. Tracking. Dude, I, I don't do pets. <laughs> Fucking fancy oh. fees. Save now. Get out of here. Anyways, um, eleven twenty three. The Adidas Don issue number oh. one. Mailman. I think this colorway is really, really dope. It's like the old school jazz uh, uniforms, or what have you. Mm. I'm not a fan of the uh, of the spider and the Don, but I think this colorway is actually really, really sick. This shoe's half past horrible. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, little Rockies right there. No, I, but I think oh, yeah, the design is super trash. Um, yeah, but this colorway is actually pretty dope. I'm not spending any money, let alone hundred dollars on it. But mm -mm. I, uh, I appreciate the design, the actual colorway. Damn, even $100 I, I would buy these. Them? I would buy these over these Star Wars Times Adidas Ultra Boost 2019 with Millennium Falcon. I'd rather, sure. I'd, rather have, I'd rather have the Star Wars joints over the. You crazy. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'd, honestly, <laughs> rather, I'd honestly rather have that. All right. All right. Well, as you said that, we're just going to skip all these Ultra Boosts. 25th. <laughs> <laughs> Monday? Keep on going. Monday, is it not? I think we're bleeding into to next Too week. Nice um, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 real yeah. quick here, real quick look, real quick look. Twenty third, yeah, because the twenty third of course is Sunday, so then the twenty fifth is going to be mon uh, Monday. Monday, yeah. Uh, what about yeah. uh, Friday? Uh, yeah. I know, I, I, listen, I'm circling back. I don't trust right. sneaker news. I'm circling back. Uh, so we got Air Jordan One Mid Fearless. That's dropping Friday. Oh yeah, that, that, like, uh, face that, tasm. Um, face yep, tasm. yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Face tasm. Uh, that colorway's not bad. No, I like the little strap on the back. Right, we got you the keto. Like them straps. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> keep the keep the strap, not strap on. Uh, the, the keto four is not enough. Uh, not enough bread for Kev. So uh, the keto what the four? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got uh, was it the bloodline? Isn't that coming? Oh no, never mind. That's that's next week. All right, bet. So yeah, that that pretty much. Uh, some Z that. All right. And, uh, what, uh, oh, there what were those, those uh, right there, bam. Them foams that were dropping um, with all the Nike swooshes on them? When's oh, the mini swoosh? Yeah. When's that Is that this on? week then? I don't know. I thought it was. Maybe um, not. I ain't buying no foams anyway. Yeah. Hey, also, I think it might be. I think we got them, so we couldn't be this week. Wow. Keep an eye out for those if you like mini swooshes. Shout out to uh, Dean go. Reynolds and What the Sneakers. Appreciate the dono. Um, I just didn't say anything because we were, we were in the middle of a uh, conversation. So appreciate that. Was very nice um, but uh, yeah, let's go ahead and um, we can talk about some topics. Ma, you're going to have to introduce them. There's no graph. Well, damn. Hold on. No. <laughs> no, you just got generic topics. Oh, right, 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 right. right. We kept it generic today. Right. Uh, Keep it broad. We got yeah. to talk to TJ. We won't be able to talk about anything. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> All right. Go ahead, Ma. All right, Ben. So topic number one, we're going to talk about uh, the NFL and Colin Kaepernick. He had his workout this past Saturday. Uh, there's some controversy there as far as the venue. He did switch it up about three hours prior to the workout. Uh, supposed to be to accommodate certain media, et cetera, et cetera. But the end result was a lot of scouts said, or the people who attended said he looked good, strong arm. There was some videos that leaked, definitely you know, sells a cannon or whatever. Um, personally, I don't think he's getting hired. <laughs> uh, but you know, it's, it's nice for him to get a shot. Um, but yeah, what do you guys, what do you guys think uh, as far as what you, uh, what you take from it? Good, good. To you say, we let you. To, uh, here's the thing. Unless it is somebody, maybe you're new to interacting with personally, business, whatever. There may be some mis, mis, you know, interpretation of what that person is trying to convey. They knew exactly what they were doing. Like they are intelligent individuals. So to have scheduled this workout in the heart of college football, like we're gonna come very close to you know rivalry week on uh, very soon. Right. The 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 area in which they wanted to schedule it the day on which they scheduled it meaning very few head coaches if any for the nfl are going to be able to be there including their trusted offensive coordinator so it's not like a qb coach could have taken the time out to have gone to see him so i think it was just kind of patronizing unfortunately and then i think after three years we're kind of missing the point his athletic performance was never in question it wasn't if he was one of the best 32 or 64 options in the country to quarterback and 
NFL, you know, professional team. It was to the fact of is he going to make people uncomfortable? Are his personal mm. stances on social and civil issues, is it going to ruffle somebody's feathers? We've all pretty much established what we feel about those things by the time we're like 25. That's really not changing. So what do they think changed in three years versus like now? Because they all know the question was going to be, well, we give you a contract. Are you still going to kneel? So I think it was just kind of patronizing if that was the question that it's still going to be in the air. You could have just had that answered and not did a workout. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, for sure. I, I mean, think no matter what, when you have an interest season, you are going to limit the amount of people who can come. So, yeah, um, oh, yeah. exactly. I, I think it's something that was long overdue and it does add spot, spotlight to the fact that he can play. You know what I mean? Like he can play the position. He definitely has a cannon. Um, and I think it was nice for the rhetoric and the narrative to be about football <laughs> in this case. Um, and kind of make that first step toward you no know, potential comeback. He's definitely not going to get put on a team this year, but it mm. does lend you know hope that maybe next year he'll you know, be invited to a camp or something like that. I don't think yeah. he's coming back. Period. I think here's I mean, the thing: it's, it's one of those where if it's been three years, if you really wanted to give this guy a chance, you could have brought him in for a private workout. Why does yeah. it have to be this big? organized event for people to go to and, and in my opinion i think a lot of people weren't even interested they were just sending representatives to save face and say oh yeah hey the miami dolphins you know we cared we actually sent somebody out there in reality if you really cared about him coming onto the team then you would have brought him in for a personal workout not this mm -hmm. yeah. and so you know it's, it's just it's a lot of things that that's kind of spotty as well you know as far as between go ahead i'll argue that if you, no, I want to make sure you get your entire. Oh no, no! no. I was just going to go into. I, I mean, as I far as I, I think, a, for a second. I think a lot of it is just kind of spotty in the sense that the, you got to, the narrative's kind of getting. You got you're sitting here saying in one and they're saying Kaepernick with three hours before pulled out of this, you know, because he wanted his own receivers, he wanted the media, he wanted to control, you know, the, the taping, which makes sense, right? I, I understand that. But the question is, weren't these things discussed prior to? But then again, it was so sh such short notice. I don't really know what was ironed out prior to. So he's kind of getting, it's, it's kind of both ways. And they're talking about the fact that he had a Kunta Kinte shirt on. He's catching flack for that. And it's just a bunch of stuff that's going on. That's it's I, overall, it just didn't, wasn't a good look in general. On, right. You know? So here's the but thing. Um, and this is what I wanted to kind of convey mm -hmm. is some teams, GMs, scouts, whatever the case may be, may not want to bring him in for a private workout because then all the spotlight is on them. If you yeah. have it as a public true. Yeah, you can match okay. it. You can match exactly. It. You, you send your representatives. There are multiple people there. It's not like you're specifically bringing them in. You're, it's right. It's a numbers game. It's the masses. Oh, let's go check it out. Let's go see what it's about. Let's go right. do That's our due diligence. You know what I mean? Yeah, so then they can yeah. kind of that makes sense because the uh, yeah, NFL team, if you're okay. already struggling, you also don't want to be the talk of uh, Fox Sports Net and exactly. everything else. You don't want to be the talk. You, you don't want to be the, the odd man week. out. Because now right, your own exactly. quarterback is going to be looking like, so am I like my job in question? Like, what's going mm. on? You got to replace right. me. Okay. There's so many Good different point. variables. If several several teams go in, it's like, all right, well, we, the league wants us to make a concerted effort to, to give the guy a look. So let's do it on behalf of the league. Whereas if you're bringing right. him individually, then there's a lot of spotlight and attention on you. So. That makes sense. Hey, let me ask you this, and I don't know if this is real or not. Did you guys see there was a post that showed there's a Nike Kaepernick shoe that's coming out? Yeah, yeah I saw it. Is it so, is so that's the thing. So then it, it kind of makes you say, well, wait a minute. Why are you? Why are we showing this now? Right after his his um, his workout? You know why? Why didn't you do it before? Why didn't you do it months after? It kind of just. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I I don't know what, where to lean with this. Is it was he just doing this just to bring more attention to himself? And then you got this release right afterwards. Did the NFL really, you know, screw it up? I I don't know. Like I'm kind of torn right now. Tell me more information. I think, I can't, well, you know. I'll just at least say I think when it comes to Kaepernick and Nike, we don't really have to question. You know, Nike can try a certain marketing tactic or they could not. I don't think it matters because as soon as they release the Kaepernick line, that thing sold out instantly. Like you couldn't get it. People were saying very, just without a whole lot of thought or context. Oh, Nike stock gonna go down. They're gonna tank. They're gonna plummet. When all of the the the, the huge campaign came out, 
with Kaepernick as the face. And I was talking to a Nike employee who works in communications and she's like, no, we're doing pretty fine. As you can see the stock. So I don't think when, in terms of the shoe dropping, I don't think that matters. They could drop it now, they can drop it later. I mean, we know everybody tries to drop something, whether it's a merch or something to make money when their stock is, they're just kind of being talked about. So I could understand that if that's what they want to drop it. It won't, I don't think whether he gets a job or doesn't get a job, it will affect itself now. I hope I hope that he he gets an opportunity to to play because people create their own narrative. They create a story based on what other people say. Like I've heard so many people say that you know, hey, he's on the decline. He's not a good quarterback. When I mean, I didn't really see that. I mean, I didn't see that he was a quarterback that didn't deserve a job within the NFL. I felt that he was right. one of the top elite athletes. He was one of the top 64 that were that's a- available to go out there and play. Now you look at a lot of teams, like you look at the Steelers, <clears throat> you look at uh, was it the, um, the <laughs> Dolphins? I mean, there's a lot struggling, of, yeah, struggling. Cowboys need a Cowboys need a backup. <laughs> there's a lot. There's a lot of teams that could that could really use him. And you know, there are people like I'm, I'm a Ravens fan. Uh oh, what happened? Okay, yeah, I'm I'm a Ravens fan, oh, and you, you know people were like, oh yeah, you know we could use Kaepernick. Like, no, we don't, we don't need him. But there are teams that really could use him. Not only can he run, he can throw the ball. People say that Lamar can't throw the ball, but he's out there balling on everybody. He, he get, is balling. He may get the MVP. So I think that people get stuck in that traditional football. You can only do this. You have to throw the ball and, and this and that. And they want to keep it that way. They don't want to embrace the change that's coming. Mm-hmm. And just like, you know, when Mike Vick was in there, you know, people, they couldn't wait for him to mess up. He messed up big. He, he, he. He upped himself mm-hmm. up, but you know it, it's, it's um, coming. And... I could probably spend another hour on that whole thing, but oh yeah, on the sure. Mike Vick thing, but... No, we're accustomed. Y'all have a good QB and Dak. The only problem is we all know that, like, I'm the a Colts fan. Yeah, you you up. you don't you don't always have a Jacoby Brissett just waiting in you know the, just waiting there to really help take right. over with poise. So we we have seen some of these backups. They suspect. Mm. <laughs> that goes down, that's it, yeah. it's a wrap. <laughs> it's done. I don't well, even I mean, know who that backup is. The, uh, Mason Rudolph, he he went down, I mean, to to the Ravens, and they had this dude out there. It's like, I think the next guy that was available was the kicker or something like that. Mm. So you don't, oh, yeah. you, you don't mean yeah, to tell me that, mm. yeah, that you don't need depth there? Come on, man. Like, that, it, it doesn't make yeah. any sense. Like they were talking about Brett right. Favre coming back, and people were like, "Oh man, that'd be awesome!" Like Brett Favre. If you I want to talk about, you want to talk about <laughs> Kaepernick can't play with Brett Favre, eighty-five years old now. Yeah, Mister Geriatric <laughs> needs to just and it, sit down. His Wrangler jeans. Yeah, I mean, I love Brett Favre. I think he's a beast, but you know, he can't. He's yeah, got. No. He's got. A, he he's got, hang, a, he's got an issue. He got that issue. You know, when he's sending um, pictures to somebody or something. I don't know. Oh I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Allegedly. Oh, well, you like <laughs> Hold up, hold up. Oh. All right. Hey, shout out to Flashy Flash, man. Appreciate the $20 yeah, dono. Um, but, yeah, I mean, this is something that we could talk about um, in length and, and really dig down into it. Um, you know, I think it's funny that people say that he can't do things when he never proved that he couldn't do it. You know, even though he's right. three years out of the league, there's people that come back. I mean, you look at AP, what he do, he did a year – or what happened with him? Like he he had AP, to sit out for he, a it was, year. It was got, a, he got injured. It was it was the child. Well, are we talking about the child? Yeah, 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 yeah. So he had, they he had to take time. That's right. He had to take time yeah. off. But he was. I mean, think about it though. He was a freak of nature. Like he was a running back that could squat what five six hundred pounds. He came back from an ACL injury. He set the the due standard of what, six months, seven months. He came back mm. cutting defenses up. So I mean, yeah, now I look at people play. and I'm like, I'm like, don't be weak. It took AP six months. <laughs> yeah, he, he can he he can still play. So you know, I'm not gonna yeah, I'm not gonna you know sit here and, and take that. You know, I, but I also you know I'd be hypocritical if I said that I was gonna not watch the NFL because I'm gonna watch the NFL. Um, unfortunately, mm. you know, I think that uh, he's gonna be a martyr of his own cause. You know, but it is what it is. And that's right. just, you know. At the end of the day, bills are paid. He eating, so you know. Yeah, true, true. All right, so uh, we only got the one topic. Um, unless you guys want to talk about one more. <laughs> let's or... um, let yeah, I'll we'll, we'll do a little mini overtime, overtime if that's all right. Um, yeah, all right. get at least TJ, a topic good? in there. So, I'm good. I'm free. Right, good on time. I'll I'll, I'll right. work tomorrow. <laughs> all right. <cool. laughs> um. 
So Nike uh, severs ties with Amazon. So they're pulling their inventory in, uh, you know, their deal that they have with Amazon, which I think, you know, it's twofold. Um, we got Don Hugh that's taking over for Parker in January. So he's going to have a lot of emphasis on online and digital content. Um, they're, you know, essentially trying to reel back and, and have more control of inventory, more oversight. Um, on where their products go, you can call it an attempt at you know eliminating backdoor, whatever the case may be. Uh, be it um, you know you're not really getting tier zero type drops on Amazon, but these folks are right. basically able to backdoor a Nike account in some instances. Um, so I don't know. It's it's interesting from a strategy standpoint where that's going to go, and just kind of looking at the flip side of it. Do other brands do the same with Amazon? It's just kind of like going to be a domino effect, you know. I, so obviously, there's a Nike, there's sneakers and Nike that aspect, but it's like, all right, did they just kind of open up Pandora's box here? And, um, and open up the front Am- Am- other... that box got opened a minute ago. So, just speaking from industry standpoint of what I, Amazon is, so Amazon used to be a partner with a lot of different companies and a lot of different areas of, you know, industries. But they wanted to say, hey, I no longer need to just, you know, survive as a partner. Like I can be an actual competitor. I can stand next to you and go toe to toe with you. And I think a lot of companies are looking at them like, all right, that's fine. Sink or swim, time to pull the IV. So now they are no longer being put they're not going to get the niceties i think that they got from other companies you have transportation companies that are no longer you know associating with them they wanted to start to run their own transportation you know part of the business of their supply chain okay do you understand what it takes to really get that package from point a to point b do you understand how much it costs the commission planes to be manufactured out to you it's not like an overnight thing like planes cost billions of dollars it takes a minute to accrue those get the pilots get the staff get the transit route do you know zones like that is not going to be easy for them they're going to spend so much money trying to do that it's not going to be as easy as just hey two-day amazon like that's why they have to charge so much more now for prime i think the same thing is happening with nike like nike understands they don't have to think about it we don't get a lot of commercials for a lot of nike things anymore but they still sell extremely well so nike is finally understanding we don't need you it's been a great partnership but just the way they're pulling their contract from tier zero you know different boutiques i think they're going to start doing this so they can really control the customer experience and everything else for themselves and why not i don't blame them right definitely it feels like you know they're trying to take more control it's, it's like a company buying back their stock right you know they, they want less out there they want more less voting rights essentially right treasury stock let's just keep things in-house and have a greater control and oversight on everything that we put out there but i wonder what the what the real advantage was i and i guess for us because none of us who who has actually bought shoes nike shoes or anything from I Amazon? <laughs> never <laughs> have no, right exactly none of Amazon, us have. You paying so i guess yes. but yeah. we are also well that not yeah, only yeah, know yeah. in the community yeah, we're also just you know a very small percentage of what goes into right a small demographic grand scale right right we're a very niche demographic so i never really you know did I mean? under right I, I guess i yeah i guess looking at it from from our, our perspective right we're not looking at amazon i guess when i right thinking about amazon right, to get your off i would say what is amazon <laughs> right exactly you know so I, you know to me i was always sitting here thinking nike partnering with amazon what exactly did that do and i guess for okay. the non-average you know outside of our demographic right. maybe they are looking at amazon for shoes versus us we're no yeah who attention. knows you know you got a person in mississippi who's picking up four monarchs like yeah i'm chilling <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if they can if they can get that shoe in one day, as opposed to going on Nike.com, because they're already in that marketplace, they're already on Amazon, they're already looking at things, and all right, and right, exactly. And then, oh, let me get the let me get into the wardrobe and get some clothes, and da 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 da. You know, like I mean, if they could roll that into that, then you know that partnership, it could be that's lucrative. true. Um, right? Yeah. Uh, like, like it they had it for they had it for a reason. It, there was a, right. a cost benefit to have it at some point. Right now, I think it, in, okay, I think it kind of, I think it, it, it probably is similar to like when you walk into a Walmart or Super Kroger or something. If everything is all in one spot, it's convenient, it's comfortable. Right. 
We want oh, yeah. to stick to what we're comfortable with. So if I'm really comfortable with shopping on Amazon and two day prime, I'm just going to try to get everything at once. It'd be one and that's prime. probably, It'd be the, you know, one, yeah, one day yeah. prime, same that's day. True. They got the little drone delivering that day, like later on that day. So I can see that from a consumer aspect of it. It's really nice. But I think people have to understand Walmart tries to bully different companies. You're going to pay this price to be able to sell in our store. Amazon holds that they they hold kind of stipulations over sellers too in terms of the different things you have to do to keep a prime badge or be prime eligible or something as a company for consumers to buy. And I think Nike understands like we don't need you, no offense. Oh yeah, no, <laughs> right. You know. I mean it's better and for it's them. It's not to like they can't ties. go back. Well, it's better for them to cut the tie yeah. now than it is to have that expectation and then have to take that loss. Yeah, just cut well, it. Yeah. It's also easy when you when you have new leadership to be like, all right, this is the direction we're going in. Right. Like right. Parker doing that's kind of a bigger deal. It's like, damn, like really? I thought we were cool. Whereas when Donahue comes in, it's like, all right, well, this is the direction I'm taking the company. Because he was eBay, right? He was with eBay. He was with eBay ABCO, yeah. Right. Right. There you go. So I mean, he. <laughs> that's yeah. that's the other part. Like clearly, and, and same thing with StockX. You think StockX, you know, with their CEO, they got rid of Luber. And, yeah. And, and they just repositioned him, and they went with a former eBay exec. So you can exactly. definitely tell, like tech online experience all that stuff it, it has a lot of value right now that's where companies are are really mm -hmm. kind of pushing and driving to to get the most out of their consumers so yep I agree. Um, which kind of parlays into the third topic if you want to discuss it that's which you. is Foot Locker, oh, yeah. uh purchasing or, or partnering investing. with go kind of investing in go it was like 10 minutes 10 million no, this, well, that was prior. This this recently, uh, they partnered with Network. Okay. Anybody familiar with the app Network? I'm putting it on my story. I, yep. I just don't. I just don't understand it. Like it's just. <laughs> it just seems. Like I just know I ain't gonna win nothing. So yeah, I it's just like, right. so, <laughs> my time in this. Crap. Well, no, I. Well, it's twofold. So you can actually just straight up purchase some things, right? Oh, right. So they have yeah. like regular releases and stuff like that, yep. um, that you can purchase. But a lot of it is like really minute, like raffle. Um, and ultimately yep. what they're trying to do is to get people to sign up to get you know data and stuff like that mm -hmm. um, yep. ads all that other jazz so it's another you know income producer for the uh, for the platform um, yep so recently Foot Locker exactly. invested three million in network uh, another what, what was the what was the goat was that a hundred mil uh, goat, I thought was or, was it a hundred? I thought no, it was ten. I, I thought it was ten million, but I could okay, it could be ten. I did a video, but it was a while ago. I thought it was smart for them to do that. I mean, because you can uh, like, what better way? You need to you can literally capture new and use market. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you can have physical stores, like there are some people that still don't they don't do apps, they don't mail shoes in. It's still brick and mortar, so they might want a brick mm -hmm. and mortar store to come bring their used shoes to. And to conduct, you know, a trade or a swap or whatever you want to have it. So being able to use a Foot Locker location, yeah, that was smart. If right. they actually so, get that up and running that way. And the other part of it, network, basically, they're like celebrity driven. That's how they draw attention to the products and the releases. So, you know, when mm -hmm. they had their Beats by Dre release or they had uh, something with Odell Beckham, with, uh, with Billie Eilish, with Alexander Wang. So, like, they're really kind of pushing that. So, in essence, like, all right, we'll give you three mil. And now we've got a ton of different advertisement. That we can now you know, right. funnel on channel and spread across, you know, the the overall platform. So right. and it's, it's all brands: Nike, Adidas, New Balance. So they're able to kind of touch upon all the different ba uh, different brands and, and gain that awareness. So that's what was the uh, so what? So that's Goat now Network. So yeah, I mean, I'm I'm curious so to see what they're it was doing. It's a hundred think... million in the Goat. Don't mess with my numbers. Guys. Oh, it was a hundred. Okay, okay. Yep. gotcha. Okay. Okay. So they invested 100 million to go, and then they put three million into into network. Network <laughs> recently just raised a total of 10 million in their Series A, uh, Series A investment. So investment. listen, man, money so, money's I mean, being thrown around like crazy right now. For real, <laughs> like Foot Locker really don't care. <laughs> Well, but that's yeah, smart, though. I mean, right? They're not going to sit there and just rely on the brick and mortar. I mean, you don't want to do like a, a blockbuster where they it was just brick and mortar and then Netflix right. came in and next thing you know, there's no blockbuster. At least they're getting smart and saying, okay, we got the brick and mortar. Okay, Let's invest in some other platforms that are heavy online. <laughs> yeah, they sure did. <laughs> sure. But I mean, it's smart, right? You know, they're spreading the money out. They've got the money, clearly. And they're just trying to touch on different, you know, online e-commerce options to you know stay you, more relevant so what you also have to remember 
is a lot of these companies, if they were doing well, that they, they, they did better under the new tax law because um, they saved a ton of money. That's why, like, when, when you have all these earnings, they're all better than expected because, well, clearly they expected to pay more taxes and they're not. Oh, yeah, oh, right. A ton of money yeah, yeah. Right. that they're keeping on hand. And what better way to use that than to invest it um, rather than just say, okay, well, we have, you know, a, a large amount of equity uh, for what? You know what I mean? So, right. like, all this money that's being thrown around is, is basically found money, so to speak, because they weren't expecting that, you know, in 2015, 2016. This right. is all stuff that came about 2017, 2018 when they changed the tax law because that was a corporate tax break, uh, consumer, you know, tax break. You and I don't get anything. Is, I was <laughs> gonna say, can is, I get some? Can I get some foul money? I mean, geez. no. What the, what they did for is us that, is that they cha they changed the deduction, so you thought you were getting more money when in reality you had to pay taxes. But um, is that a tax write off? That's my hand over there. Is that a write off for them? I'm yeah, sure they they can flip the accounting and such. Yeah, a way. I'm sure okay. they will. Yeah, because yeah, I was thinking about when Under Armour bought uh, my fitness pal for I think it was like five hundred some odd million, and I was reading, you that's know, they they needed a write off. So yeah, so All right. okay. well, Under Armour <laughs> write offs and accountings—that's kind of a hot topic right oh, now. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, CEO is uh, out, out the door. So yeah. Well, he's no, well, he's still. It's the same thing where Parker, you know, he's just being repositioned. He's gonna. Oh, so what. he's not gone. Yeah, he's no, he's, he's not, not going gone. anywhere. No, okay, that's his company. All right, still that's his has, company. I think, right, yeah. Right, I think he has minority ownership right now, like forty nine percent, forty eight percent, something like that. But in okay. essence, like he's still very much so a part of it. He's going to be more on the. Uh, it's definitely like in the design area. Um, so okay. like more like R and D and stuff like that. So he's not going to be part of the day-to-day -day stuff. Well, I mean, as of right on. now, what sells really well for them is The Rock. So they better figure that out. <laughs> right. They got to get that curry line going, too. Because when they were when they hit the high in 15 before they tanked, like... His seven, his current good. shoe looks really good. It looks a lot better than some of these other models he has. Yeah, but what sucks for them is that he's hurt. He's not going to play until... Yeah, no, yeah. So 20, we, so. Trust, trust yeah, me. Yeah, but, yeah. I know. I know. Oh. I know. Sword, sword topic? It's like... It's like being back in 2013. I know. Yeah, so. Yeah. Um, okay. Anything else you guys want to add? No, nah, I'll set. I'm good. Uh, all right, let's go. Look at those curries in the seven. So, uh, what about those Sour Patch kids? Candy Rain? You saw those, CJ? What? Sour Patch kids? The Curry Seven. Uh, I don't even know. If, I don't know. I saw something. What did I see today? So there's two colorways. There's like a red, and then there's like a like a green. I saw something with Skittles today and some shoes, but no, I didn't see. No, it's sour yeah. patch. <laughs> yeah, no, I saw something with Skittles. Well, no joke, it was like shoes and Skittles today. I don't know why, but uh, no, Skittles. I did not. Like I want. This is my problem with investing in performance basketball sneakers. If I played on a consistent basis, then yes, I would probably have the Kyrie too low. I would probably have the brand new curry seven but since i don't i don't end up investing i don't end up spending the money on just performance shoes unless they're like well not even really runners because i just do speed intervals so <laughs> yeah i don't i don't really run like that but for anyone who is quasi curious there they are the okay. rocks look like yeah. the rock looks like a human colored ninja turtle <laughs> <laughs> he's big the, yeah the rock stuff his line isn't cheap but it is really nice like it's well thought out i think it's awesome the way they do his definitely uh, not cheap the way they do his so most people don't know his shoots like so he will tell the crew when they come to shoot him this is not going to be a fake bs workout where you spray glycerin on me to make it look like i'm sweating he goes through a full normal hard workout and he tells you <laughs> get the shots you want to get however you need to get them but he's not moving out of the way for you he's not doing anything special for you so if you don't get the shot that you want in the time that he's working out you're done that's it you don't get anything else and that's it that is nice like i, I would definitely i would get well i would play in both but i don't know why i really like the red one the hyper like it reminds me like a hyper punch like the grain a lot of pop mm. Pass. <laughs> <laughs> the, seven, the new one he's got the black the black red and white i really do like that one just you know i can't see yeah, the dog pair yeah davidson 
I really like it. Like, of course, there's, there's nothing to go on my way, you know. He has a nice shoe come out, shoe I actually want to see. He's hurt. <laughs> yeah, we won't up. even, we won't discuss Clay because that's enough nah. heartbreak. I mean, they're in our support group. If you want to bring that up, you know, probably <laughs> on as long as you got one. So, um, I had people checking on me when Clay got hurt during the playoffs. Trust me, <laughs> my DMs were hella lit up. Are you okay? Do you need a moment? No, I don't. I already knew he tore his ACL. Y'all talking about? He just sprained it. All right, no, nah, it, it was a wrap. But um, it is quarter after nine. We're gonna shut it down. Uh, so, yo. Know, I will start. Uh, TJ, thank you so much again for for joining us. So we certainly appreciate it. A lot of great insight. Hopefully the usual suspects, uh, they enjoyed it as well. We got 49 thumbs up. So I think, you know, I think it was received well. Um, Shout out to Kev, orchestrating the whole thing. Mo, uh, Marcus, hope you're feeling better, man. Um, You know, we missed you out here. Uh, I know he's sad that he had to miss this one. Um, Yeah, I'll keep it brief and uh, take it away. Mo. Go ahead, Mo. Uh, I was gonna kick it to that. Well, anyway, <laughs> TJ, thanks for. <laughs> you caught me off guard, dude. I forgot, Marcus. Marcus, you, you, you fucking shit up, and you're not even here. <laughs> um, TJ, I uh, appreciate you for coming on. I know, you know, like I said, you and I talk pretty regularly, so it's good to get you on. Uh, let you give everybody your insight on not just about you know the sneaker aspect, but you know definitely that financial piece. Uh, you guys make sure that you hit her up for that ebook. Um, and then, like she said, as far as you know, you do anything through StockX, hit her up as well. So, thank you for coming on. Uh, thank you, uh, Ma and Kev, for uh, you know, once again, putting together a good show, even though we're um, a man down. Marcus, hope you're feeling better. Uh, if you ain't on next Monday, we're gonna vote <laughs> you off the island. We're gonna find a replacement. Uh, and once again, shout out to the usual suspects for tuning in. Uh, running in overtime with us. Definitely appreciate you guys. Hope you enjoyed the show. And uh, we will be back uh, once again next Monday. Mm-hmm. All right, TJ, you want to shout All right. out? Anybody, well, guys, anyone? thank you. Thank you so much for having me on here. So I got to be on the show, not just be a fan liking, sharing in the <laughs> chat. It was definitely fun to be able to come up here. So I'd already told you guys, honored, humble, grateful to be up here, especially to kick off my birthday week because i feel like the older i get i have to like make i have to hype myself up to get excited uh about my birthday but so this is a good way <laughs> to kick it off yeah because it just feels like bills and all this other stuff just comes up uh. like I, I work seven days a week so people are like oh it's the weekend i'm like i'm working this release i work sunday it's just a day to me it's a At milestone point, though tj it's a milestone as you about i do i turn 30 on thursday i know uh, welcome don't worry, I'll be photoshopped. You come in, come into the 30s. I'm leaving the 30s. <laughs> I'm coming in to the 30s. So, you know, hopefully, and listen, anything has to be better than 29. So, <laughs> coming mm-hmm. into the 30s. But thank you guys for having me on. Thank you, everybody. If you are a subscriber, a supporter of mine, you came to the chat. I appreciate you for everyone that shared this post that I was going to be on here tonight on IG. Trust me, it did not go on notice. I tried to reshare. So thank you again so much and everybody that showed me out for and people I don't know for MSoul2503 and Flashy Flash. Thank you so much for all the well done. I truly appreciate it. All right. All right, Kev. Mike, Kev, you want to? All right. You got uh, big, big shoes to fill. First big of shoes all, to TJ, uh, definitely appreciate you uh, coming on the show and giving us your perspective. Um, great energy. Um, hopefully we can have you back on here um, at a later date. Um, I'm always available. Just tell Mo to hit me up. <laughs> all right, but, but, you know, Mo, Mo being the deer. <laughs> <laughs> Lord and, uh, Jesus. Shout out, shout out to my brothers on the panel. Um, shout out to Marcus, man. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you feel better uh, soon. Shout out to the, uh, everybody in the chat. Um, appreciate you guys coming through and interacting with us uh, every week. Um, it's definitely an honor to have you guys. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, rip through this. Uh, this list here um it's the people who shouted the show out uh you tag me in in it then uh, i will read your name uh, but first we're gonna go uh soulmates big boy sneaks 43 fresh kicks 3 euro got soul d 1014 footage society and also make sure you guys um check out footage yeah. society one of the sponsors of the show um dominican Koki, j soul i am large young KY Souls 
And uh, that's that's all I got for the people that tagged me. Um, if you if you guys are tagging the Monday Midso, um, just tag me in it somewhere. You can even hide it; it doesn't matter. Um, just so I can see it and um, and you know reshare it and all that good stuff. But definitely appreciate you guys uh, spreading the word for us. And uh, hey, M M So Satolo, Satelo, Satelo, appreciate that two dollar dono. And um, also, flashy flash. I don't know if I said that anyway. Anyways, I got nothing else to say. It's it's gone on too long. And uh, here's your uh, hashtag hero. If you want to be a hashtag hero, just use uh, the Monday Midso hashtag the Monday Midso. Um, be honest with you, I, I pretty much look uh, on Monday. So um, you know, Sunday to Monday, you know, you have a better uh, opportunity to be in there. Uh, but here you are.